As several African countries experience coups, we wonder is Nigeria taking lessons and avoiding the same fate. And River State Governor Nyesom Wiki is in the news again. This time he has boasted that he is the most qualified person to rule Nigeria in 2023. This is Plus Politics and I am Justin Atadonye. Welcome back. The President Mohamed Buhari has condemned Tuesday's coup attempt in Guinea-Bissau. Presidential spokesman Garba Sheikhu said this in a press release. The Nigerian leader also congratulated President Omar Mbal of Guinea-Bissau on surviving the coup attempt. Earlier in the week, soldiers had fired heavy gunfire near a government compound where the president had been chairing a cabinet meeting. President Mbalo also later described it as a failed attack against democracy. Other African countries that have experienced coups in Africa in the past one year are Burkina Faso, Mali, Guinea and Chad. Three of these countries are in West Africa with the exception of Chad which is in Northern Africa. They also have similar issues to that uh, Nigeria currently experiences, insecurity especially. Can Nigeria take, uh, take these developments as a warning call? Joining us to discuss this is Joe Keshi. Good evening to you, Mr. Keshi. Thanks for joining us in Plus Politics. Thank you for having me, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. I'm sure you are aware of all the development that has happened, uh, you know, in recent times. Burkina Faso, Mali twice, and, uh, you know, Guinea-Bissau, or Guinea itself, then Guinea-Bissau, you know, just uh, this week. But first of all, let us just start by asking, uh, uh, how, how did you feel when you first heard of that failed coup d'etat? Did it come to you as a surprise? Um, for Guinea-Bissau, not really. Why not? You know, they... They, they, they've had a series of uh, groups, they've had a series of uh, instability, and uh, a number of countries in the region, led by Nigeria, has actually been working behind the scene over a long period of years to stabilize that, uh, that country. I, 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 I think it's right to say that the election that brought in this president, you know, among those who made it happen, you know, was of course uh, Nigeria. So, um, but when you begin to see coups take place in one country or the other, I mean, uh, for those of us uh, who are old enough to know what happened in the 60s, you begin to fear whether this is not a domino effect. Now you've had how many coups in the last couple of uh, months, and here we are now dealing with the situation in, uh, in Guinea-Bissau, so nobody knows where next. And this is the most unfortunate, if not worrisome, uh, situation uh, we find ourselves now, particularly on the West Coast. All right, uh, Mr. Keshe, let's uh, still talk more on um, Guinea-Bissau. You know, the president, uh, when he reacted, he said uh, it was an attack on democracy. Well, when I talked with some analysts, uh, analysts during the week, they seem to feel that African leaders are, are the ones actually attacking you know, democracy with their actions and, of course, some um, inactions. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Look, it's, it, uh, uh, you know, um, there was an American president who many years ago said the pork ends on my table. The pork ends on the table of the president. When you look at all the reasons that have been given by in countries where Jews were successful, you will see that, um, that the military, I think like in the Mali or Kina Faso, they were reacting to the fact that uh, the, the politicians at that time, apart from the issue of tenure and elongation in a place like, uh, like Guinea, but mm. they, they, the military guys were reacting to the fact that they were sent to the war front and were not given all the necessary support needed you know, to fight the war that uh, has uh, fallen on, uh, on two countries. Uh, and so, certainly, if leaders do care about their countries and you are confronted with such serious uh, security situations, no, 
the first business of government, you know, is security. And no government can, can, uh, can uh, develop without a secure and peaceful and stable environment. So if the military complains that they say it's uh, what was going on and they were not receiving the support of the political class who were doing something else, you can see why some of these schools uh, do take place. But that is not to say that uh, we should rule out the ambition of the military themselves. And I've repeatedly argued, like in the 60s, it was more out of, out of ambition because all the coups that took place in the 60s and all the coups that have been taking place uh, in the last couple of uh, months in this country, in uh, West Africa, they say the same thing. It is corruption, it is, uh, it is this, it is that. But the truth of the matter is that to a large extent, they too were part of the problem. They created some of this on the development, you know, because they were in power for so many years. And what did they do? This is the issue. Mm. So, to a large extent, I, I agree that the leaders have been able to play in this, you know, and uh, they can't exonerate themselves, neither can we exonerate, I mean, remove the factors, the ambition of the military charge themselves. All right, uh, let's try and bring uh, this whole uh, issue closer home. Let's uh, bring it back to Nigeria now. I remember uh, the... The chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, um, Kaya Defiami, um, asked um, the president about the implication of um, all this uh, military takeover. And in the response, uh, the president said that Nigeria has passed uh, through uh, that stage for good. Would you say that um, his response was a bit of a narrow view, or do you really think that we really don't have anything to worry about? Well, look, that was what we all thought when democracy started, you know, uh, taking root in the, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in the continent, particularly on the West Coast, where for so many years there were military uh, regimes. And suddenly, over a number, a period of time, almost all these countries were going through the democratic process. And we thought we had done the way with military uh, incursion into politics. But here we are. You know, um, it, it's just that um, it, 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 in, in a recent uh, uh, in a recent engagement with some people, we're, we're actually looking at who next, because the situation in almost every African country, particularly on the West Coast, could actually lead to coup. So, for anybody to say that we passed, you know, I, I think that uh, I, I think that is probably a little bit. Uh, uh, not facing the, the reality of the situation. And I think the only thing that can stop who's is not just only proper democratization, you know, uh, in the region, but the, 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 the other thing is that there must be development. You know, the welfare of the people matters. It is because the people themselves have lost confidence in the leaders and in the government that they elected, that they voted for. That's why you see anywhere that coups, you know, do take place, people jump to the street rejoicing. I can see the pictures you are showing. I don't know where that is coming from. But that is what you find in every, in every country, you know, and the cities where coups are taking, taking place. And, and this is why leaders must uh, re-examine themselves and say to them, as a question, are we contributing to this new wave of coup d'etats in the region? I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, there's this school of thought that believes that um, coups don't just happen. They are strategically planned and executed by state actors who most times, you know, ride on citizens' dissatisfaction with the state of affairs, you know. But looking at what we have gone through as a nation, we've had um, issues of, uh, like you have mentioned, insecurity, issues of corruption. Do you see a situation where some people, some state actors, as it is right now, may want to ride on all of these issues that we have suffered over the years? I, I sincerely hope, I sincerely hope not, you know. Again, for I, I think the Nigerian situation is uh, possibly a little bit different from some of these little African countries. You know, I can give you one example I cite all the time. Um, in the 60s and in the 70s, it was very easy for the military, particularly when the, the capital was in Lagos. All the military needed to do was to march on to NITEL, you know, take over NITEL, march on to NTA, 
uh, Radio Nigeria take over those two. That's all, you know. And of course, go and arrest the president uh, wherever you know he was at that time. And that's it. The coup has taken place. But today, you know, look, <laughs> there are so many television stations, radio stations, social media, including yours. That would make it very difficult for this to happen in uh, Nigeria. So no military guy to just think to wake up and uh, seize uh, Asu Rock and then which which radio station are you going to go to? Are you going to seize uh, AIT, seize uh, Arise, seize uh, your own television station, seize Channel? There are other channels to which uh, citizens can actually bring down the, the coup. So this is why I think our own is uh, different. And we thank God that some of these, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, media expansion has taken place in this country. So that will, that will probably, you know, but then that is also to say that the military themselves are not aware of this. And they could, look, in Sierra Leone, for example, the easiest way, <laughs> in Sierra Leone, for example, the easiest way to stay the cruise to take over uh, the presidential palace. Once you take over the presidential palace, you don't even have to go to the radio station. That's it. You're taking over government. They've done this two, three, four times. You know, but as I said, ours will be pretty difficult. Obviously, because we are bigger, we've grown over the years. Uh, our dissatisfaction is, is completely different for some of these other countries. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, the regional bloc and um, the roles uh, they have played over time in order to ensure peace uh, in uh, the West African sub-region. But before I go into that, uh, the United Nations Secretary General, let me just uh, read something that he said sometime last year, Antonio Guterres, that he said, he said that the absence of uh, enough deterrent was responsible for the endemic nature of coup d'etats in the world. Do you agree? Please come again. I think I lost my video. I'm going to... Yeah. Oh, all okay. right. I was just quoting what the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said last. He was giving reasons for uh, this uh, uh, epidemic, as it were, of coup d'etats. And he said that it was as a result of an um, absence of um, enough um, deterrence. That's why we had lots of uh, uh, coup d'etats or epidemic of coup d'etats in the world. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have said it. You see, ECOWAS has been doing the best it can. It has imposed sanctions against some of these countries. But for the sanctions to work and for the military boys to come to their senses, ECOWAS needs to gather international support. It's that international support, you know, that will put pressure on the military, you know, to listen to what ECOWAS is uh, saying. And I sincerely hope that uh, sooner or later, the world itself will rally around ECOWAS. And yeah, because if you don't do this, if you fail to, no, Echo, uh, ECOWAS was dealing with um, Burkina Faso, Equatorial Guinea happened. So it just shows you that the military boys are not paying attention to whatever ECOWAS is saying, because they know that, except that they know that uh, as of today, ECOMOC, I mean, ECOWAS do not have that capacity you know, to take military action against them. So, sanctions would work if it's globally applied. All right, uh, let's still talk about um, Nigeria. Over time, Nigeria has acted like a big brother, you know, to these uh, West African countries. Uh, you, you are aware of, um, you know, former President uh, mm -hmm. Goodluck Jonathan, who was an envoy to Mali. Yes. You can hear me, can you? Who was an yes, envoy, I can hear you. Who was an envoy to Mali when they had all of, uh, in the wake of all of their issues. Uh, with all of this right now, do you really think Nigeria, uh, you know, has learned a bit of uh, maybe or some lessons in, in as much as they are in the forefront of uh, making peace and mediation? Do you think we have actually learned any lessons in all of this? Oh, of course. It's because of the lessons that we have learned, uh, because we are trying to uh, stop any domino effects that's the main reason why you have uh, Nigeria engaging, leading the engagement of uh, uh, of ECOWAS in trying to persuade the you know the ambitious military officers you know to step down, let the politicians resolve their you know their problem. But look, I said this in another forum. We must not consistently, I mean, blame 
put all the blame on the ambition of the military. We must also look at the failure of the political class. You know, the political class failure to, you know, to do the needful, to open up the political space, to develop the country, to build up the human capacity of these countries. It is responsible for this. You know, sometimes, you know, with particular reference to some of these uh, countries where you have, I mean, there, there, there is a theory that, uh, oh, it's because of uh, uh, the involvement of the French in, this, in these countries that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the French weight is too much for them to carry and things like that. But my simple question is, these countries have been in the, 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 the my, 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 concern, my concern over the years is that uh, despite independence from France, a number of these leaders have just failed to disengage themselves from, from France and build up you know, their own uh, country. They cannot continue to live under the shadow of France for, mm. for, for years to come. So they must find a way to resolve this issue of France, France, France. You know, so, um, but again, I, I believe that, um, that the political class must do a lot more, you know, to stop coups happening in Africa. All right. In some reports that we have watched and seen uh, in the wake of all of um, this uh, coup d'etat or failed ones in the West African <laughs> sub-region, most of the seatings there were actually jubilating they were dancing somewhere just them um, chanting all sorts of uh, songs uh, encouraging the military even at some fora or some places you go to in nigeria you hear people say that uh, the country was much better when we had a military rule compared to what uh, we have right now in the wake of uh, this report that came out on wednesday from api saying that um, eight percent of um, nigerians are the ones who are happy with this present dispensation could there any be could there be any justification really for the military to be in power? No. I said it before. The, the, the mere fact that the people rush out to the street to jubilate is an indictment on the political class on the on the leaders themselves. Because if they had done well, the people would fight to keep them to protect them, to keep them in office. But the simple fact that the people came out, nobody organized them, they just heard on the radio or television that there's been a coup and the military has, uh, has sacked the government in power. They, they, they came out rejoicing, and that's a great indictment on that government or the government that has been uh, sent out of uh, power. Look, in the case of Guinea, for example, Delegations of African leaders, they did all the best they could, even Ivory Coast, pleaded with them. ECOWAS tried to put uh, uh, some flaws in its own, uh, in its own uh, rules of operation that there should be no, long, uh, no tenure elongation. The people did not want tenure elongation. They wanted free and fair election. At once it is time for an election, let's have an election, let's change leaders if I'm not satisfied with the leaders. But the leaders have said they refuse to do that. And in, and in a number of cases, like Guinea is a good example now, that dissatisfaction was one reason why they welcomed the military. And it is because the people welcomed the military that ECOWAS is finding it very challenging to get the military back to the, I mean, back to the barracks. And so I said what I, I mean, I repeat what I said before. It all depends on the leaders themselves. They just have to provide the leadership and do the needful. The, what do the people want? They want security. They want development. They want the basic things of life. And I don't think that is too difficult for them to, you know, to, uh, to, to provide. If, if the leaders provide the leadership, and the people appreciate that leadership. There will be no fools. All right. So invariably right now, what we have um, on the sub-region is an issue of... Uh, uh, leadership or the lack of it. You know, since that is a problem, how come um, the citizens themselves have not been able to vote out um, the bad leaders that they've uh, been plagued with over time in West Africa? You know, 
And look, it's no better than, than me, the way election is, uh, you know, is conducted. Uh, I, I'm not sure that in a number of, uh, in a number of countries, in, uh, on the West Coast in particular, quite, quite frankly, in a number of African uh, countries, you know, two things that leaders have done is not only have they seized the political space, they've actually seized the system itself in a way and manner that is very difficult for them to be put there. Down. Look at what happened in, uh, in uh, Uganda, for example. You know, what they did, was that an election? Practically, you can't describe that an, an, an election. And in, and in a number of African countries, you see the opposition very justifiably provide evidence that the elections were rigged. But people go around and say, ah, look, uh, let's manage this thing before it gets into, before we run into crisis. And everybody just get tired. And so that creates a disconnect between the government and the people. It's like everybody is saying, well, look, what do we do? Every man for himself, but for us all. The time will come, there will be another election. But sometimes before another election, the military intervenes. You know? So it's difficult. Look, we just must do... Democracy, by the way, is not all about elections, you know, and that's the point that I think I, I need to emphasize. It's not about elections, but election is it, it's something that gives the people the confidence that they put in people they believe and provide what they need. And if they fail them, and this is why sometimes I think I like what goes on in Ghana, you know, except for the last election in Ghana. Ghana has been changing leaders every four, four years or things like that. And when you talk to a Ghanaian, the attitude is that, look, one day we get it right. Yeah, some of these guys, and by the way, they, most of the leaders of Ghana in the last couple of years, they've done tremendously well. But the people still feel that, no, they've not done enough. And so they vote them out of power, you know, except the last, uh, you know, uh, election. And you can see that the opposition complained, they have evidence, but... Um, the the, the the courts did what <laughs> courts here in Nigeria do very well. They just threw it out and said no. You know, the president won, and here we are. All right, I must say a very big thank you to you, Mr. Joe Keshi, for all of the points. And of course, uh, the things Nigerians should be wary of. Uh, so we uh, avert all of uh, these uh, peculiar problems that have been plaguing uh, the sub-region in, uh, in recent times. Uh, Joe Keshi is the former permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Many thanks once again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, it is still Plus Politics uh, on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with more. Stay with us.